Aaron Akerjala is here for Sports. Aaron, great to have you. Good morning. Hello. Yeah, good morning to you. Good, good morning to you. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah, we got our implications yesterday, so yeah, yeah. good one there, good one there, good one there, good one there. I did the need for. All right, um, we are off to a little bit of a sad start today, understanding that um, the news that actually broke out yesterday from the camp of the Super Eagles still in Abu Dhabi, or as a matter of fact, they are actually en route to Nigeria. Uh, we're talking more about that in a moment, but the news coming out from the camp of the Super Eagles as they prepare for the Nations Cup has to be the fact that Victor Boniface, the man who this season has actually shone like a million stars, having a breakout season with Bayer Leverkusen there in Germany. In 23 appearances this season in all competitions, he's been able to find the back of the net 16 good times. And this was the tweet there. He says that, good luck, guys. Of course, I'm um, actually sending the Super Eagles off because he knows that he's actually leaving the camp and actually wish them all the best. It's rather unfortunate that this has actually happened because some will say this man is actually cursed or not probably blessed with a little bit of luck, understanding that... The last time out when he had an opportunity to go for an under-20 competition, seven days before the under-20 competition, he was actually ruled out. And this man, Terry Murphy, an able replacement, will be coming in and stepping and filling the shoes. We are hoping to see the partnership of two victors, Victor Osimhen and Victor Boniface. But at the moment, that will not be happening. And we'll have to settle for Terry Murphy, who is good enough, who is also very little in front of goal. And this is what he said, wish you guys all the best. All right, the... Nigeria Football Federation and the Super Eagles actually retweeted with a heartbreak emoji showing that this man will be heavily missed. This would have been a good opportunity for him, but it is what it is, as they say, and it's unfortunate that at the moment, injury has also has actually claimed another another of the Super Eagles starting 11. We spoke about Wilfred Oye and Didi. Didi. Now, Victor Boniface. We are hoping that this will be the last because... Rufai, yesterday, everyone, everyone that followed the Super Eagles were livid. They were, they, were, they were losing their mind that how can the Super Eagles lose to Guinea that are ranked 80th in the world in terms of FIFA rankings. And the Super Eagles are 45th. And you look at that massive gulf in class and the Super Eagles lost on the week where they are supposed to play their opening fixture, which is on Sunday, two goals to zero is how we actually ended. Rather unfortunate, rather sad, anemic. And if you'd ask me, Jose Pizarro should know that he has his word cut out for him because you do not want to go into a tournament um, with this kind of blemish, knowing that your team haven't been able to rise to the occasion. Gaining, losing, losing convincingly two goals to zero. Of course, we know that um, in the course of the game, uh, Moses Simon was given a penalty. He fluffed his lines. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But it's really, really sad. And at the moment, they've been led, left egg-faced. I want to see how they would actually react today because later on today, um, they should be touching down very, very soon, talking about the Super Eagles, because later on this evening, um, the governor of Lagos State, Baba Jide Sawolu, will be hosting them to a farewell dinner at the State House, and, it will, he will be, and they will be expected to probably give assurances to Nigerians that they are going to the Nations Cup in Ivory Coast, not as participants, but as one of the main contenders to probably win that particular tournament. But at the moment, they are not covering themselves in glory, I must actually say. Away from that, all right, the news actually broke that legend of football, a legend of German football, a legend of global football, Franz Beckenbauer passed away at 78 yesterday. Uh, tributes have been pouring in left, right, and center. And that's the name there, the Kaiser, the Kaiser there, of course, popularly known as the Kaiser. One of the few people as, who has won the Ballon d'Or as a defender. He won the Ballon d'Or as a defender there. Tribunes have been quarrying in there. Heinz Rummenigge says that they will be having a funeral service for him there at the Alliance Arena. The man, he won quite a litany of trophies. And one of three people in world football to have won the World Cup both as a coach and as a player. He did that with West Germany back in the day, and he also won it in 1990 at the expense of Maradona and the Abi Celeste of Argentina, having lost to the Abi Celeste of Argentina as a coach in 1986. So the man will go down 
as one of the greatest of all time, without a doubt. And finally, as is as it stands right now, finally, let's talk about one man that has actually, the news actually came in yesterday, and that after several years of partnership, 27 years, one man, Tiger Woods, at the moment, uh, Rufai, this is the tweet that um, Nike put out there. It was hell of a round mm -hmm. at Tiger because this man certainly was money on the book. This is what Tiger Wood actually said after 27 years. I was fortunate to start a partnership with one of the most iconic brands of football. The day saying, of course, he spoke about Phil Knight and how Phil Knight took a gamble on him. And as they say, the rest is history. A beautiful one there for Tiger Woods because... You look at Tiger Woods, his fortune right now stands at about 1.1 billion. Mm -hmm. He's one of few ex athletes that have actually crossed the billion threshold. And okay. as a match. He's still playing. Okay, okay, one, okay, still playing. <laughs> okay, not. Okay, yes, of course, you'll be playing in the Genesis Invitation now, <laughs> one of his own tournaments in February. Okay, um, he's still very, very active, but I must say that he's actually benefited heavily from being one of the biggest faces in. Um, Golf understanding that um, he made 1.8 billion from endorsements mm. alone. So when you look at that, and when you look at um, what they call it, uh, Rafai, when you look at the amount that Nike even paid him, you can't just but envy sports stars uh, because it's actually if, you, if they can actually help us with that figure there, you'll see how the progression was when he actually started with them. The five-year contracts, 40 million here till the final one, which was about 200 million there. So you look at that, and I must say that Tiger Woods, of course, one of the greatest of all time when it comes to sport. Of course, arguably one of the greatest when it comes to the golf game. I must say that at the moment that partnership has ended. He says it's, there's still more in the, in, the, in the tank, and he'll be revealing that very, very soon. I mean, so uh, I want to start by paying tribute to the Kaiser himself, mm. Franz Beckenbauer. I mean, football legend, football coach, administrator for excellence. It doesn't get any better than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you watch all the World Cup that uh, Franz Beckenbauer played, it was just impeccable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a beauty to watch. Uh, part of the German team, you know, that did well and excelled. He was called the Kaiser, the Emperor, because of the way he marshaled the midfield. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, they don't, they don't really get that better. You know, when you talk about the likes of uh, Beckenbauer, midfield maestros like that don't really get better. You know, very fleet footed, was good on the ball, and uh, at the Alliance Arena, he will be terribly missed. And also, his time as a football administrator. Uh, the coach, and I say he'll continue to rest. Uh, it's quite a sudden one anyway, because you will have thought that uh, Beckenbauer will have lived longer. And only a week where we lost a lot of football sporting yes, great Mario Sagalu, mm -hmm. you know, of blessed memories to the past. So we just say rest well, uh, the Kaiser himself. Concerning uh, Nigeria losing to Guinea, I, as you were speaking, I just remembered en route to France 98, when we had lost to Yugoslavia in the friendly match. True. Then we also lost to Holland. And I think I remember maybe one of the officials of the NFF was talking to the players after they had lost to Holland and asked them a question. Now, what do you want to do in the World Cup? Do you want to make Nigeria proud or you want to just go there and fluff around? And I think that question was instructive when Bora Milutinovic finally took us to the World Cup. And suddenly, hope came back when we beat Spain 3-2. Mm. And we also beat Bulgaria in the second game. Yeah. And we lost 3-1. I think that was the only game Yakini, the second game Yakini, that was Yakini's last game, officially, yeah. mm -hmm. in the way he played against the Paraguay. that had Chilavet then. Then we finally fluffed our lines against Denmark because of match bonuses and everything. So I'd like to ask this team, as they go, what do you want to do in this Nations Cup? Big question. Do you want to make Nigeria proud? Big question. Or you want to make football people sad? Because it's very sad that we're even negotiating anything less than winning the Nations Cup. When you think of the pain that was caused by us not going to the last World Cup. And, and now they have that, all the backlog of allowances, and wages, have remunerations being cleared. And being cleared and you mm, have, you know. They need to do better. You just need to they do need better. To do so, better. I, I mean, I was going to touch on AFCON as well. Just a few days to go, it mm -hmm. doesn't inspire confidence. 
in the team, in the, in the, in super, in the Super Eagles, when they are losing um, to, to a team like Guinea um, national team. And also uh, the loss of their, well, not a loss, but also uh, one of the players being injured. The question I was going to ask you, Aaron, and I know you'll be covering, bringing us updates live um, mm. uh, from, from um, Abidjan. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what are the prospects at this point? I am rooting for the Super Eagles. I am hoping and holding on to Rufai's predictions based on... Was it no, football, football could be tricky. Yeah. Let me just, in, in very briefly, football, football could be tricky. Nigeria beat Egypt in their yeah. opening game at the last Nations Cup. Egypt got to the finals. Nigeria yeah. didn't make it out of the group. Yeah, that's true. Okay. That's how, right. I mean, they didn't make it past the next round of the competition. That's the beautiful that's thing about the beautiful game. Yeah. Anything can happen. Anything can so, happen. I hope we'll be positive. Thank you so much, Aaron. <laughs>